Good morning everyone and welcome to morning prayer on Thursday the 27th of August. I'm back in my study again mostly due to weather and um, not enough time. Um, so I'm praying here in my study which is quite often the place that I will sit comfortably in that chair over there with a cup of tea and be praying for you all. Um, this morning our, uh, our readings uh, if you were wanting to read the Psalms this morning, it's Psalm 990. And our readings are from 2 Samuel, chapters 7, 1 to 17. And the New Testament reading is from Acts, and it's chapter 7, verses 44 to 53. So Acts 7, 44 to 53, and Samuel... 2 Samuel 7, 1 to 17. Um, and both of those readings are quite, um, go very well together um, and are very much in my thoughts this morning. So do read both of those. So this morning, let's pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And the canticle for uh, Thursday morning. I have given you as a light to the nations. I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord and I have called you in righteousness, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, and that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. And so then, continuing our readings from the book of Acts, chapter 7, 44 to 53. Our ancestors had the tent of testimony in the wilderness as God directed when he spoke to Moses, ordering him to make it according to the pattern that he had seen. Our ancestors in turn brought it in with Joshua when they, when they dispossessed the nations that God had drove out before our ancestors. And it was there until the time of David, who found favour with God and asked that he might find a dwelling place for the house of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are ever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the Righteous One, and now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that receive the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So that reading and um, the reading, if you read it from 2 Samuel, um, later on. They're both um, very much talking about building a place for 
for God, a, a, a house of God. Um, and the Old Testament talks about um, the cedars of Lebanon making a house out of cedar, um, which always reminds me whenever I hear that of our beautiful church, uh, cedar tree at St Mark's, our cedar of Lebanon there, um, but also of course of Lebanon, and which is often in my mind, um, especially at this moment. Um, but the team, the team and I are um, thinking, and we're having a meeting next week, and um, planning ahead. Gosh, it's difficult at this time, because um, the big thing, I guess, that we would be planning normally at this time of year, just as we're schools going back and we're back into the into this part of the year, is Christmas. What on earth are we going to do this Christmas? Um, so difficult to plan because even I can't see that we're going to be able to fill our churches with hundreds of people um, like we do on Christmas Eve for the for the children's service or we'll have a midnight in every every church um, it's just not going to work this year um, whether or not we go into further lockdown as some people are talking about I can't see that we're going to improve, so we're, we're definitely thinking about how, as Christians together, how do we do Christmas this year? Um, and how do we do a lot of things? You know, there's all songs in between, there's remembrance, there's harvest, all those things that we would normally be doing in this season, this up and coming season. And it, it's so difficult to, to plan. Um, because even if everybody wanted to come back to church, we can't fit in with, this, with the social distancing that we're still having to do at the moment. And a lot of people are finding that coming to church wearing a mask is um, a barrier somehow between them and what's going on, or them and others, or maybe them and God even. I don't know. So what can we learn from these readings this morning? Well, God very much says, I'm not a building. I love that um, bit in the um, in Acts this morning. Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me? Says the Lord. Where is my place of rest? Because didn't I make all these things anyway? Didn't I make everywhere? And I hope that you're beginning to find that. I know we all miss the the social aspect of church, of course. Um, knowing that every week we're going to meet the same people and we're going to have coffee and we can chat and um, catch up and it's it's just you know and obviously a nice social thing to be able to meet with other people but of course that's not what church is about we don't come to church to meet other people we come to church uh, to worship and to learn and to hear the scripture and then to support one another in our Christian lives. So to support each other in taking the gospel out um, outside of the church building. And, it, and it's always about outside of the church building. The church is just a meeting place. So have we found a bit of a new meeting place? Are we meeting here? Well, I can't see all of you, so it feels a bit like perhaps I'm not meeting many of you. I don't know who is watching or uh, who looks at these or, or our Sunday services, unless people tell me, of course. Or sometimes people make um, remarks in, on Facebook or whatever, so I know they're there. But are we finding a new way, do you think? Are you managing? I'd love to hear how you feel about it. But of course we do have some very beautiful buildings, one not quite so beautiful, um, but one that we might make some changes to. Is that what we should be doing? Or is God saying, make a new way, find a new way, do something different, do something new? Very difficult. As a, as a church leader, because I am sure many will not be coming back to church. We will have lost some people, maybe to other churches that they've been following. Maybe they've 
discovered that their faith isn't all there and so coming to church was just social it wasn't about God and worship and um, those people are the people that need to come back to the church those ones whose faith is strong they don't need the church as much it's those that struggle and don't we all at some time or other struggle with our faith and that's 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 why we need the church but do we need all those buildings are we going to be able to use them in the future goodness a lot for us all to think about let's pray Father God, we pray for your holy, catholic and apostolic church in all the world. We pray for every place that has been affected by this pandemic. All Christian people, churches around the world who are wondering what next and how to be church and how to be Christian together. We pray that we may all be one in Christ our risen Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that every member of the church may grow in knowledge of you and faithfully serve you, that your kingdom may come and your will be done. We pray for our bishops, for our Archbishop Justin, for our Bishop, Bishop Tim, for our suffragans David and Debbie, for James, our area dean in this deanery, for all cl clergy and lay workers. As we seek the way forward for your church in our places, we pray that we may be faithful ministers of your truth and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen and all who hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray that there may be justice and peace on all the earth. Give us all, leaders, right down to the common person, the grace to do your will in all that we do and that our works would bring glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fill us, Lord, with compassion for those who suffer from grief, trouble or injustice. Thinking of all the places around the world where there is injustice, where there is war and where there is suffering. And we pray for all those people who have had to leave homes, livelihoods, everything they own to move to another country. Praying for refugees, asylum seekers, migrants. In our own community, we think of all of those who are own, on our own hearts and minds. All of those in our weekly and daily prayers, all those we know who are suffering who are unwell in hospital, who are at home with not such a great diagnosis. Lord, we pray that all may be delivered from their distress and into full health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember with thanksgiving those who have died, all of those who we have loved and see no more, for all of those whose anniversary is around this time of year, for all of those in our communities who are grieving who we don't know, all those who have to face funerals in the coming week. Lord, we praise you for all your saints who have entered into eternal rest. May we also come to share your eternal joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers 
for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the collect for this week. O oh God, you declare your almighty power, most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so, as our Saviour taught us, let us pray with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining me in this morning's prayers. And uh, have a wonderful week. God bless you. And um, I will see you here on Sunday or next week or in life. Bless you. Bye-bye.